JSP CRX episode number four. Let's talk about engine mounts. When it comes to mounting a B-series engine into an EF chassis, there's actually been many different ways that it's been done in the past. And over the last 35 years of B-series engines being in these cars, people have gone through stages of modifying the original single cam engine mounts to fit into these cars, modifying these cars to take the Japanese B-series mounts themselves using welded together steel engine mount kits and that's evolved all the way to what's currently available, which is a high quality CNC machine billet engine mounting kit. Now through the many years of engine swaps, the positioning of the engine has changed quite a bit. Originally, it was just a matter of finding a way to shoehorn it into the chassis and getting the hood to close. But as technology has changed and these companies can now use 3D design to position the engine exactly where they want it in the engine bay, we've got now is a pretty much perfect fitment. Or do we? I'm going to show you the differences between the steel welded engine mount kit that came in this car when I bought it, this Hosport billet engine mounting kit that I've purchased to mount my engine in the car, and then also I'm going to show you a little something that I made to possibly improve the fitment of the B16 engine in the EF chassis. Let's start by taking a look at the steel engine mount kit that came in this car. I'm not sure the brand of this steel engine mounting kit. Most likely it's either some eBay generic Chinese brand or something very old that I haven't seen in a very long time. But overall, the construction is okay for a steel welded engine mounting kit. You can see here that the bushings are starting to come apart. The pins are no longer secured into the steel sleeves. And on our driver's side engine mount, the mount rubber is actually wallowed out. So the pin, so the pin actually wiggles inside the bushing. Now, because this is just some Chinese steel, whatever engine mounting kit, replacing these bushings is not really possible. Since I don't know who made the mount, I can't reach out to them and say, hey, can I get some new rubber bushings? So that's one of the downsides to purchasing these generic type mounts. There are other downsides that I'm also going to cover. Moving over to the Hosport engine mounting kit, you can clearly see right away the quality is greatly improved. All the machining is very nice and we know that Hosport has been doing this for many many years so their fitment has been refined to make sure that this just drops right in without any problems at all. Purchasing a name brand mount kit like this Hosport kit also gives you the benefit of contacting them if your bushings do wear out and need to be replaced, they will indeed actually sell you these bushings separately. So you can know that this kit is gonna be long lasting in your car. If you ever have any problems, it's gonna get taken care of and you can make sure that it's sort of a one and done purchase when mounting the engine into your car. There are also some other things to note when it comes to the steel welded kit and the Hosport kit is that the engine doesn't even sit remotely close to the same position or at the same angle. Let's take a look at these two transmission mounts. If you look at the steel mount, this bushing is basically completely vertical with the mounting plane of the transmission mount. This means that the transmission case top mounting is going to sit horizontal with the ground. If you look at the Hosford engine mount, you can see that there's actually an angle here and the bushing leans over to the side. The reason for that is when you mount the engine in the car, it's actually supposed to have a forward lean to it. And so by them putting this angle on this mount, when the mount is situated into the chassis straight, the transmission has a downward forward lean like it's supposed to. Another difference in the fitment is the height of the engine. So if you look closely here, the bottom of this engine mounting bracket is basically even with the bottom of this bushing. But on the Hosford mount, the bottom of the bushing is below the engine mounting bracket height. This actually makes the engine sit a little bit higher in the car than the steel welded kit. This will give you a little bit more ground clearance. As far as the rear mount goes, these are actually fairly similar to each other. Obviously the steel mount is quite a bit heavier and bulkier than the aluminum mount, but as far as I can tell, the overall placement of the mount on the rear cross member is pretty similar. Now, if you followed any of my other builds, I really like to make custom one-off parts for my cars. And because I do own and run JSP, I have access to all types of machinery to make custom parts. If you followed this build from the beginning, you know that it basically started with me breaking the transmission case and pulling the engine out because the car was so low. 
So obviously while I'm in here and I'm doing the engine swap over again, if there's something that I can do to prevent the transmission case from getting hit or the header from hitting the ground again, I do want to do that while I'm mounting the engine in the car. So the obvious solution to giving yourself more engine ground clearance from the ground is to raise the engine up higher. So what I've decided to do is modify this Haasport engine mount kit and also make my own JSP driver side mount that lifts the engine about nine and a half millimeters, which is actually the difference between the deck height of a B18 engine and a B16 engine. So my end goal for this is actually to lift my B16 up so that the height of the engine is the same as a B18 engine, but the bottom of the engine is higher. So the first step to modifying the Haasport engine mount kit is to disassemble this two-piece transmission mounting bracket and machine the top portion of this mounting bracket nine and a half millimeters off so that we can raise the transmission nine and a half millimeters. The second step is to actually machine an entire driver side engine mount. And this puts the mounting position of the driver side of the engine mount nine and a half millimeters higher. And obviously if we lift the transmission and we lift the driver side of the engine, we're also going to have to lift the back of the engine. This is the rear engine mount. So I've machined some nine and a half millimeter spacers that are just going to drop underneath this. And as, as it bolts onto the cross member, it'll end up sitting a little bit higher. So real quick, let me show you what it took to make these engine mounts. And then we're going to get them mounted on the engine and hopefully get the engine also mounted back into the car. The first thing I'm going to do is this transmission mount is two pieces. This is a separate piece. I wrote a program that's gonna go in and we're gonna cut this down about 10 millimeters. So it's gonna come down 10 millimeters. That's gonna raise the transmission. We'll go back in here again. The first step is to level the top surface here because it's actually cut at an angle. So I'm gonna use an indicator to indicate this surface flat, which I've already done. So left to right, while the mount is not sitting straight, this top surface is flat. So now we can just cut that down 10 mil. Engine mount bracket. It's back on top. Good to go. Now let's just go ahead and make that driver side mount. First operation, raw chunk goes in the machine. Here's the first operation, just the rough shape. And we flip it over and do the other side. Second operation done, that's the bottom side. Now I just gotta punch the bores through for the bushings. Third operation done, one side for the bushing. Flip it over, last operation, the other side for the bushing. And that's the fourth operation. So this is our new driver's side engine mount. All right, here's the original Haasport mount. And then here's our new mount. So next to each other, you can sort of see the difference here. One thing to note is that I've seen that Haasport uses a roughing end mill called a corn cob end mill to leave a texture on the inside here probably because it helps with bushing retention and so I tried to do the same thing my corn cob end mill is not as uh, pronounced as theirs I'm guessing to use a larger diameter but I tried to mimic that texture design to hold the bushing in so the first step before we put the engine back in the car is we need to mount the rear engine mount onto the rear cross member so the Haasport mount Normally just bolts right to the cross member, but because we're going to raise the engine, I need to put these nine and a half millimeter spacers in between the engine mount and the cross member. Now on the cross member, there's two sets of mounting holes. Most likely Honda did this because there was actually a myriad of different engines that were available in this chassis. The rear mount normally goes on the right sided holes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my spacers underneath the mount, and then I'm going to also use some new longer JIS hardware. Now, Haasport makes this back mount actually slotted, which makes installing it a lot easier because if you put the mount back in there, it's difficult to get a bolt in behind. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bolt and spacer in first, get those threads started, and then I can just take them out. Here's the front spacer, and I can just slide it on in back there. I can align the mount on the front, get that one started, and then just a matter of tightening them down. All right, transmission mount shortened, bolted back together, bolted onto the transmission. The JSP driver side mount bolted onto the engine. I'm not going to do anything with the back of this engine when we drop it in first. We're just going to drop the car down on the engine and let it hang on those two side mounts. Then we can install the T-bracket to align the back engine mount. I just realized I need to take off the driver's side engine mount to get the engine to go up in. So driver's side engine mount off, transmission side engine mount on, up in the car, plop the driver's side mount back on top. So I first start with sort of the engine forward a little bit so that the intake manifold can clear the back cross member. But then after we lower the car down and the intake manifold is above that cross member, then I'm going to push the engine back into its regular position so that I can align the transmission mount. Keep in mind that I'm leaving everything sort of finger tight right now so I can wiggle the engine and take all of the tension out of the bolts. That way I don't end up sort of tightening down one engine mount and then having to force the engine into position and then tightening another engine mount and then now those two engine mounts are forcing against each other. This can cause early bushing wear and extra vibration in the car. driver's side and passenger side engine mounts are in. Obviously you can see the engine is rocking because there's no rear mount. So now I'm just going to lift the car up and throw on the T-bracket. This rear T-bracket is a factory Honda part and usually to get this installed I sort of snake it up around the back and then try to pop it in over the mount that's on the cross member. I actually like to try to align that bolt first and then rock the engine to align the front, the part that bolts to the engine. Sometimes if you just bolt the T-bracket to the engine itself and you're rocking, if there's any misalignment on that rear bolt that goes into the rear mount, it's very difficult to reach down in there and try to align that bolt. It's a lot easier to align the bolts that are on the front of the bracket because they're easier to get to. Do you remember that coil on plug cover plate that I was showing you guys in our last episode of This Week in the Shop? Well, we have a prototype finished, and I just wanted to give you guys an inside look of how that project's going. This is the first prototype coil plate. That's the part that goes down first. Then the coils get bolted onto that. And this is the prototype cover for those coils. This is machined out of 6061. Unlike most billet covers that you see on the market, which are really bulky and sort of heavy, I've spent extra time to whittle away as much material as possible. These are actually less than 100,000 thick everywhere. And so they give you a feel that's not much heavier than the original plastic piece. In fact, it's actually only about eight ounces. So with the coils installed, then the cover just goes over the top. And that gets mounted down with the standard Acorn hardware that Honda uses from the factory. Now that the engine's bolted in place, I can start working on all the stuff that attaches to it. I can go ahead and start on the engine wiring tuck and the body harness wiring tuck. And also I'm gonna start working on picking apart all of those little billet brackets and accessories that are missing when putting these cars together so that I can start working on designing those parts as well. Leave a comment below about some sort of accessory billet part that you think is missing from this platform and that should be made for these cars. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode.